In this video, we're going to be running benchmark tests in Premiere Pro for the MacBook Pro 2015. We're here in 2020. Is this a good buy for video editing? All that's coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the places where I recommend picking up a 2015 MacBook Pro, or you just want to know the pricing and more in-depth specs, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Also, if you want to know my overall opinions about this laptop, Top. I've made a video and you can check that out in the YouTube cards above or maybe head-to-head -head comparisons with the 2020 or 2019 version of the MacBook Pro the YouTube cards above or the Photoshop benchmarks all of that will be the YouTube cards above so I'm doing a lot of things on my channel to cover this laptop for you fully and in-depth so if you have any further questions or you want me to run certain benchmarks comment below let's jump into the video editing benchmarks and waste no further time the first thing I want to mention is the specs I'm running for these tests. Once again, I have the 2015 MacBook Pro and has the 2.2 gigahertz Intel i7 4980HQ processor, 16 gigs of RAM, Intel Iris Pro integrated graphics. That's the 1536 megabyte version. And it has a solid state hard drive of one terabyte SATA drive. Also, something else I think is important and a lot of people want to know is battery life, color accuracy, and screen brightness. So we're going to get a battery life of about 5 hours and 15 minutes on average from these used 2015 laptops. You can replace the battery and possibly get more. Uh, and then also in creative tasks, we're looking at about 3.5 to 4 hours on battery. The color gamut range, which surprised me, is 98% sRGB, 76% Adobe RGB, and 76% DCI-P3 color accuracy, with a screen brightness of 340 nits. Let's look at video editing to see what we can do with this laptop. To render out 7,240 frames, it takes 6 minutes and 39 seconds. To give you some perspective, the latest MacBook Pro with an i7-9750H processor can render out that same amount of frames in about 2 minutes and 50 seconds, give or take some seconds there. If you attempt to play back 4K full quality playback in the timeline of Premiere Pro, it's going to be very glitchy. It's not going to be a usable experience. However, if you pull that down to one fourth quality, you will have a smooth playback if you're only using Premiere Pro. Now, if you open up like Google Chrome and start browsing the web and maybe have Photoshop open, you're going to experience that same glitchiness with 4K. Now, if you go down to 1080p and do full quality playback, you should be totally fine. And if you start opening up programs, it may get a little glitchy, so you might have to pull it down to half. Um, but other than that, it plays back the timeline very well in 1080p and on 1 4th in 4K if you have no other programs open. All right, now let's talk about export times out of Premiere Pro. What I do is I take a 9 minute 4K clip, put it into Premiere Pro, and export it out at full quality 4K settings. It does this in 36 minutes and 25 seconds. Not earth shattering, I have to tell you that much. That's quite a long export time, but it's good to know that it can do it in a decent amount of time. It's not like two hours or something. Now I'm gonna take that same nine minute 4K clip, put it into Premiere Pro and export it out at 1080p. And it does this in five minutes and 45 seconds. So a very respectable export time from 1080p. So what about fan noise? What about when you're working in Premiere Pro and you're exporting out a full quality 4K clip? What happens? Well, the fan gets up to about 43 to 48 decibels when exporting, which isn't that bad. Um, the newer MacBook Pro, when I tested it, it actually got up to about 55 decibels. So the newer MacBook Pro was a little bit louder, although it was much faster on the export time. Now, when you're running this computer at idle, there's no fan noise. And when I got into you know, a web browser like Google Chrome or was working in Photoshop, I experienced a little bit of fan noise here and there, um, but that's around 40 to 45 decibels depending on the tasks that I'm pushing this laptop through. 
So what about After Effects? We talked about that a little bit in the beginning, say we're gonna run through some of those tests. When I put it through the benchmarking test from Puget Systems, it would start the test, it would make it about a third of the way through, and then After Effects would throw me an error and it would just stop the test. So I would not personally recommend this laptop for After Effects. If you maybe know some way to get better performance out of a laptop of this caliber, this processor, and this year, definitely comment in the comment section below. We wanna help out the community. We wanna have a lot of conversations going around the 2015 MacBook Pro, so I want to see people get help here. I'm not an After Effects guru, um, but I did want to run those tests to see how it performed, and unfortunately, it would not even finish the test. If you do want some recommendations on laptops that I do recommend for After Effects because I know they have the performance to handle it, I'll recommend some of those in the description below at the same price point as a 2015 MacBook Pro. Like I said, if you're curious about any exact tests you want me to run, please comment in the comment section below. I want to help you guys out. I want to test this MacBook Pro 2015 to the fullest potential to help you in your purchasing decision. Don't forget about those links about the best After Effects laptops as well as the places that I recommend buying a 2015 MacBook Pro. Subscribe if you've got some value here and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I will see you guys here on the next episode.